Students, in our previous video lectures, we have discussed different critiques of literature starting from Plato, Aristotle, Longinus to the postmodern era, Jacques Derrida, and so on. But today, I am here before you with a short summary of the whole history of literary criticism. See, different historians and critics have written this history of literary criticism, but as the student of literature, as the student of literary criticism, you must read this book written by Gary Day. The title of that book is Literary Criticism, A New History. So, I have presented, I have tried to present a short summary of different phases in the history of literary criticism. Actually, there are 10 different periods, okay, which I am going to discuss one by one. So, now let us begin. Period number one, phase number one is entitled as Hellenic Criticism. This is one period from 5th to 4th century BC and here the center is Athens in Europe. Okay? The term Hellenic comes from the word Hellas and Hellas means Greek. Okay? In ancient Greece, criticism is believed to, be, to have begun with some literary creations. Okay? During the 4th and 5th century BC, in Greece, you know, there were some writers, there were some dramatists who were writing comedies and tragedies. There were some poets like Homer, Virgil, they were writing epic poetry and all. Okay, so literary creation was happening during those times and at the same time, uh, critical documents were also written on the literature which was produced in those times. Okay. But as far as actual contribution to criticism is concerned, you must remember these two names during this period and they are Plato and Aristotle. Okay. Plato, you remember I have uh, up already uploaded videos on Plato and Aristotle. You can check out the playlist of my channel and you can watch them later. But Plato wrote Ion and Republic where he has uh, expressed his philosophical views on poetry and in the same manner Aristotle who was the disciple of Plato has also written the poetics. Okay? Poetics means Kavya Shastra. In this poetics he has presented uh, his ideas very comprehensively on different types of poetry and the major focus is tragedy. And poetics, remember, is considered as the most influential document during this first phase, first period from which all subsequent theories have been formulated by other critics down the ages. So, you can just say that had there been no Aristotle, there would have been no other critical theories that we come across uh, in different periods. So, remember the first phase, 4th and 5th century BC, Greece and remember the two names Plato and Aristotle. Now, let us move to the second phase and that is Hellenistic phase. Now, do not confuse yourselves. Okay? First phase is Hellenic phase, the second one is Hellenistic phase. Now this phase is between the 3rd century BC to the 1st century BC, not in Greece. Now the center is Egypt. Okay? The word Hellenic, the first phase refers to Greece, but the word Hellenistic refers to all other countries who, who were under the influence of Greek culture. Okay. So, you know, if you see the whole history, then by the end of the 3rd century BC, there you see the whole a kind of decline 
in the Athenian culture. Athens was the center, supreme as far as art, culture and literature is concerned. But you know there is a decline now during the 3rd century BC and now Athens is not the center of creative activity. Instead of that you know uh, the new center of art, culture and literature was developing during this time and that new center was Alexandria in Egypt. Now Alexandria is one city located in Egypt. Okay? Uh, though, uh, though not much output you find as far as creative art is concerned uh, in Alexandria but still you know the ancient uh, books, ancient poetry and drama they were now being researched and studied by the recent scholars during the 3rd century. Okay, 3rd century BC. Whatever little literature was produced was mostly the imitation of the previous authors. So second phase you do not find much output of create creative literature, not much output of uh, critical literature. But you know still you find that the center is Egypt and not Athens. right? So the first phase the center is Greece. Athens, the second uh, uh, phase you the center is Alexandria in Egypt. The third phase is Gracio Roman phase from 1st to 5th century AD. AD means after date, after the birth, birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Gracio during this period, you know, that already there was a decline in Hellenistic phase okay and now a new uh, new era began which is termed as Gracio Roman why because now Rome is at the center right Rome which was influenced by Greek culture becomes the center and that's why it is called Gracio Roman period okay Rome was the capital of the whole Roman Empire there were some scholars who were inspired by some Greek uh, literature, Greek culture, Greek art and wanted to excel and wanted to equal them. Okay? They aimed at the originality in their age. Criticism was you know, largely consisting of elaboration, interpretation and application of rules laid down by Aristotle. You see, Aristotle was still living during this period. Aristotle who published poetics in the first phase, okay, 4th and 5th century BC, still Aristotle is studied by the scholars, by the research scholars and thinkers during the Gracio-Roman period. But there were some original critics who, who contributed in the field of literary criticism and you should remember these names uh, Horace, Quintilian and Longinus. So these three were the major critics of the third phase Gracio-Roman. Now the fourth phase is the is it is called the dark middle ages from 6th to the 14th century it's a long long period and it is called the dark ages why because you do not see much output of literature during this time and also not much output of criticism literary criticism you see roman empire breaks up in the 5th century AD and there was everywhere much confusion and dislocation. Okay. The rich literary treasures, uh, they were almost neglected and forgotten during this time and literature was frowned upon as sensuous and pagan. Here during this middle ages, you know, more importance to grammar rhetoric rhetoric means the art of speaking grammar rhetoric and logic they were given more importance in comparison to the production to the writing of literature because you know there was a spread of christianity christian missionaries 
uh, they they were spreading christian christian religion okay more importance was given to theology philosophy and literature was subsided okay even the aesthetic beauty uh, and high literary merits of the ancient literature ancient literature means which literature produced during the 5th and 4th century bc in greece the the merits of these uh, olden literature th uh, these merits were also highly ignored by the people during this uh, dark middle ages however you must remember towards the end of this dark middle ages there was one critic known as dante who wrote the vulgari eloquentia if you translate you now this is an italian title uh, dante was an italian poet and italian critic okay and he wrote this the vulgari eloquentia the translation is illustrious vernacular so a new uh, advocacy uh, for the spread of vernacular importance of vernacular was done by dante here towards the uh, in the beginning of the 14th century so that was the period now if you come to the fifth period that is the period of renaissance now this has been considered the exact beginning of literary criticism in english literature okay see so far so far the 14th century there is no output of literature in england there is no output of criticism in england but with the with the advent of renaissance with the dawn of renaissance during the 16th century and onwards you find that literature was boosted and criticism literary criticism was also uh, boosted by the people constantinople you know the city fell to turks in 1453 and there was a huge rise of literary uh, literary and critical activity you see it was also during this period that typewriting machine was a uh, newly invented and because of the invention of this typewriter you know there was much output of literature everything was now easily available uh, in printed form and that's why literature uh, you you find mass production of literature because there was mass production of literature that's why there was mass production of literary criticism also okay uh, who were the important uh, uh, poets uh, sorry important critics during this time then remember sydney sydney has been considered as the first critic of english literature who wrote apology for poetry and he defended art and poetry against the severe attacks of stephen gusen i have already uploaded a separate video on sydney's apology for poetry you can go to the channel and you can watch it later okay so sydney has contributed a lot during the period of renaissance in the same manner you must also read samuel daniel okay samuel daniel wrote defense of rhyme and published it in 1603 and he has here written about the fitness of english language for rhymed verse okay uh, so he has advocated and supported the rhymed verse in poetry and drama third important contribution during the period of renaissance is given by ben johnson a very popular name i have pre uh, already uploaded another video on ben johnson you can watch it later but ben johnson's timber it is also known as discoveries published in 1641 here you find ben johnson as a classical uh, critic he has advocated uh, he has supported the classical norms laid down by the ancient critics so these three critics remember sydney okay ben johnson and samuel daniel now we come to the uh, next period sixth period that is neo classical 
criticism during the 18th century now who doesn't know john dryden john dryden has been considered as the father of english literary criticism and john dryden wrote the essay of dramatic poetry uh, during this neoclassical uh, period okay here during this period most of the critics gave much importance to uh, the strict adherence to the rules okay strictly they were uh, following the rules laid down by the french authors and french authors they were imitating the uh, ancient greek and roman uh, critiques so in a way it is known as neo classicism here we have john dryden alexander pop joseph edison richard still and dr samuel johnson these are some important critics who wrote criticism during this period in the seventh period which is again a golden period in the history of english literature and history of english literary criticism the romantic phase from 1798 to 1830 roughly okay you know that in 1789 there was a french revolution there was a rebellion a french revolution took place uh, in france and the influence of this french revolution is found in all other countries in europe okay so because of french revolution and german idealism there was a huge change turning point in criticism and literature both which is known as the period of romanticism in the beginning of the 19th century now the hollow rules strict rules were now discarded by the critics okay most of the critics they wanted freedom of writing okay freedom from the rules okay subjectivity in literature was uh, mostly advocated by the romantic critics the two names you should three names you should remember william wordsworth who wrote preface to lyrical ballads uh, st coleridge who wrote biographia literaria and shelley who wrote the defense of poetry i have pre- already uploaded videos on these critics also okay so if you want to get detailed uh, uh, contribution of these critics you can watch them later now we come to the eighth period and that is the victorian criticism three important names must be remembered during this period and they are matthew arnold john ruskin and walter pater okay now too much freedom the feeling of freedom and individualism was found in the period of romanticism but now that uh, these feelings of freedom and individualism have been now rejected by the victorian critics okay matthew arnold has been considered as the root of modernism modern critics okay uh, you know actually it's believed that modern criticism comes from matthew arnold he became a major critic of this victorian era and he gave a touchstone method a new method of comparative criticism has been given by matthew arnold john ruskin also popularized the relationship between art and morality and walter pater an important critic uh, during this victorian era also became a leading figure leading literary personality in the movement of art for art's sake uh, i have already prepared and uploaded videos on these three critics which you can watch in detail later on now we come to the ninth second last stage the ninth stage and that is the modern age uh, modern age is roughly considered the first half of the 20th century you see matthew arnold and walter pater their traditions no doubt continued in the beginning of the 20th century but uh, we also see some new developments uh, in criticism in the hands of these critics like eliot richards lewis and virginia wolf t s eliot is known by 
his tradition and individual talent okay he gave a uh, an objective approach he developed an objective approach uh, in criticism in the same manner professor dr i a richards also developed some new uh, study of psychology and objectivity has been uh, advocated by i a richards in the beginning of the 20th century f r lewis is also the most competent critic uh, who gave more importance to the textual school of criticism now the text was at the center okay during the modern age uh, during this period text they believe that meaning comes from the text ignore the biography of the author ignore the historical background social background of the author the focus was now more on the text and the formalism the new approach of formalism came into existence virginia wolf also gave a new concept of writing novels that is stream of consciousness technique in modern fiction okay and during this period you find different uh, so many movements like symbolism imagism formalism structuralism psychoanalytic criticism and so many uh, all these different movements made a hodgepodge of approaches in criticism i have already uploaded videos on all these movements i am sure you must have watched them okay now we come to the last phase and that is the post modern age uh, from 1960 onwards okay these post modern critics they started reacting against the structuralist and formalist approach of the modern age okay see the first half of the uh, 20th century you find focus on the text okay but in the second half of the so structuralism was there in the first half but in the second half of the 20th century post structuralism came into existence so jacks derrida remember this name he published structure sign and play this lecture he had delivered in one of the symposiums uh, conferences okay and uh, uh, this lecture has been published as structure sign and play this is the title and here he has propounded a new critical theory of post structuralism uh, separate videos on post structuralism rola bats uh, michel foucault i have already uploaded you can watch them also rola bats also gave he announced the death of the author he he believed that uh, author has nothing to no role to play as far as uh, the meaning is concerned meaning comes from the uh, from the readers not even from the text okay so readers response theory came into existence michel foucault uh, attempted to show that what most people think of as the permanent truths of human nature and society actually change throughout the course of history so truth is not one okay truth keeps on changing from time to time so a new uh, revolutionary idea was generated by michel foucault so this is all uh, in post in post structuralism or post modernism period okay so remember all in all there are 10 different periods in the history of literary criticism starting from plato and aristotle in the hellenic period to the post modern age we have jacks derrida rola bats michel foucault and so many others i hope this video is helpful to you and if you still have any doubts or questions do write to me in the comment section of this channel and please friends don't forget to share this video among all your friends and classmates thank you for watching thank you